Today we're going to talk about our Google Drive. I am not going to totally go through a slide deck for you guys, um, but I just want to say good morning and thanks so much for hanging with us today, this early in the morning. So we're going to go from 7 to 7.30. Uh, at the end of it, though, I do have this slide deck and it's going to have everything that we're going to be covering today. Uh, so let me get to our table of contents here in a second. So here's some things that I was very quickly going to go over on how to Marie Kondo your drive. I went a little too fast. So if your drive does not spark joy, um, I've been on a lot of meets with a lot of people who go, I hate Google Drive. I hate it. I can't ever find everything. Everything in this world sucks. Um, this one is for you today. So we're going to be talking about ways to make our drive spark joy. So we are looking at a table of contents of we're going to go over folders, some files, and then a little bit of some shortcuts and tips and tricks. So I'm going to give you the slide deck at the end. I'm going to have it available for anyone who wasn't able to come as well today, but I'm mostly going to be here hanging out in my own drive. So I don't know how experienced you guys are at using your drive or if you've been in there and you're like, I don't know what it is I'm doing wrong. I can't find anything. So if you want, you can open up a new tab and you can do some of these things with me if you would like, or you could just let me talk and uh, go ahead and get like a bagel and like a coffee or something and then just chill and I'm totally good either way. So. The first thing I want to talk about with Marie Kondo at your Google Drive is utilize folders. <clears throat> now, utilizing folders is going to be a little bit different than um, just creating a whole bunch of folders, right? So sometimes people say, well, I'm going to organize it by creating a whole bunch of little folders. And then all of a sudden, instead of, and this is my drive, this is as far down as it goes. Instead of having a ton of files here, you can't find anything. You're going to have a ton of folders here where you can't find anything. So my advice is to really narrow, narrow, narrow things down and to put a lot of files into your folders. The other reason you're going to want to have folders is it makes it a lot easier to share out an entire folder with people instead of going, ah, I needed to share like seven things with people. Um, is it this one and this thing and that thing? That's, that's kind of the first thing. So if you've never created a folder in your Google Drive before, go to New, go to Folder, and then you can go ahead and create a folder here. So I'm going to actually call it our demo folder for today. I was going to call it a daemon folder, but same thing. All right. So we have a folder, <clears throat> and boom, it's right there. And now you can go ahead and take any of these files and shove them into that folder. Now. Pretty simple, you know, that's kind of the thing like, duh, did I come here for this? But now let's talk about kind of taking those folders a little bit to the next level. And then let's talk about your root drive. So your root drive is this main drive right here that's my drive. Uh, I went to a conference one and some uh, once and someone told me, and it kind of changed my life, your root folder should be the things that you need absolutely immediately. Now we are going to talk later about star drives and how you can use the star drive later for that, for things that are really important and things that you need. But one of the things that they suggested was have those files you use all the time or the things you're working on immediately in your root drive and try and keep everything else in folders. And it's kind of changed my life. So I always have my schedule out. That's where I add in our like sign in sheet and everything for today. I have follow up emails that I use all the time. I kind of keep the time sheet. And then like today I'm using this Google Drive file, so I'm keeping it in my root drive. And when I'm done with it, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it here into my EdTech folder, because then I don't need it anymore. So that's one way that my drive now sparks joy is I'm not trying to weed through a thousand files to find something. Um, I, I try and keep it in folders. Now, just because you take a file and dump it in a folder, doesn't mean it's still organized. So we're gonna get inside those folders here in a second. but. Another way is if you look at my drive right now, and is there any questions about that? Because that was pretty basic, right? But maybe creating that root folder is going to help you out. So there's one tip. So, and if you want to put it in the chat, I'm watching the chat. Um, the other thing you can do with your folders, which some people don't quite know about yet, um, if you haven't played with it, 
is if you right click on a folder, so if you look at my um, cursor right here, if I left click, it's gonna be blue. If I right click, it's gonna be red. So in case I forget to tell you, you can go here and change the color of your folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this one, what color have I not used? I've used most colors on my root here. Let's use this kind of, nope, I already used that one, but that's fine. So here I've now colored my folders, makes it a little bit easier to see. <clears throat> now I've used in my root folders, cause this is like how crazy organized I am. And I swear this is how my drive is all the time. I didn't do this for this. <laughs> this is my type A kind of craziness. Um, is you can also right click on a folder and I'm going to go ahead and rename this guy. And you can add emojis to it. Now, I don't advise doing this for everything. I do like doing this for my main folders or some yeah. folders that have to do with, like, units or things we're doing for class. And I'll show you my, my classroom one in a minute. But if you right-click inside that naming, there will be an option to have emojis and symbols come up. So I don't know what a good symbol for demo would be, but let's find... This sad dude because you know it's fake so hey there we go so if you do put an emoji at the front uh, what's kind of nice about that is it's gonna use the name of whatever that emoji is so I don't know what that emoji is gonna be called but you notice that it moved it up here if you do something like a star or you do something like an airplane or something that begins with a it's gonna push that to the very top of your drive so that's really something nice to do with a folder that you use all the time now if you don't like that and you're trying to hyper specifically alphabetize everything another thing I like to do with my drive is add a number in front of the folders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put zero in front of this. And then that'll specifically put all of my folders in order. So um, I'm gonna go here into my teaching folder and give you an idea of why that would be a good idea to do when you're a teacher. So I do have like yearly operational different sort of folders here. And in my yearly ones, I keep a folder for every single year I've taught. So, um, well, not every single year since I've had Google Drive. So 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, I haven't been in the classroom for a little while, but this, I just thought I kept my 18, 19 one super clean. So I had English language arts first in the morning and then it went to social studies. And then I did like, you know, those, those things that you do in the morning, like math problems and things, science, bathroom passes, projects, that kind of stuff. And I put them all in order for the day. So it made my day easier and faster because I put my folders in this order for every single day. If you don't like that it goes across this way, let's talk about um, <clears throat> how you view stuff inside your drive. So if you go up here to this lovely guy right here, you can take this and change it from the grid view to the list view. And what's kind of nice about this is it makes it very quick and easy to see. And yes, I do organize it by rainbow colors. This is why I said I'm a little bit crazy. But um, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I knew everything's in order. I had it for every day. And then boom, I got my drive very much more organized. Um, is there any questions about emojis or color coding your folders? I think we're good. I'm taking some wait time here. Okay. So just a couple of tips and tricks with folders. The other thing with my lovely folders here is I don't know if you have a drawer at home. I think after 20 years, we've progressed to like a closet or maybe a potential room where you shove everything in it that you don't need. So I get that you're like, man, she must organize every single one of her folders all the time. This is my junk folder. So some people have an archive folder as well as a junk folder. I wouldn't necessarily say you should call it your junk folder, but this is my like more folder. This is my folder where I'm like, I have no idea where I'd want to put these things. So I have a fish. Don't ask me why. Someone gave it to me. It was really cool. But, you know, I don't have a place for my fish. Um, I have some inspirational quotes and stuff here. I don't have a folder I want to dedicate specifically to quotes. And then I have places that we've all talked about at lunch that we wanted to go to. And I seriously threw it in my junk folder. So not that team, I love you guys, 
I don't like the idea of where we can go to lunch. I just don't have anywhere that I would want to put it within my drive. So this was another tip that I had learned about a while ago. I call it my more folder. If you do have random files kind of here and you're like, I'll just keep it in my drive, instead create that digital junk drawer space and throw them in there and then you can keep this space nice and clean. <clears throat> so I'm gonna head back to this folder up in here. And one other thing I like to redo is if you look at this, it's really clean and it only has folders. And some people go, well, I have these priority files and mine look different. And the reason that is, is if you go up here to the gear icon, some people don't realize that in your settings for your drive itself can really help streamline that use of all of your files and things. The first thing I like to do in settings is I like to convert any files to Google Docs files. That means that if I upload a PowerPoint presentation, it automatically knows to open that in Google Slides. If I throw in a Microsoft Word document, it knows automatically to convert that to Google Docs without keeping two copies of that same file. I do usually keep working offline checked off. You can change the size. It can be comfortable, which is a little bit more open. I like to keep mine kind of compact while I still can see. Um, if my eyes kind of give out a little bit, which they do after being on a computer for a long time, I will actually change this. And then these are defaulted on all the time where it says to offer suggestions and things. Some people really, really like that in their drive. So um, it puts up that priority bar up there. But I don't really like that. I just like it to kind of be like nice and clean and clear without all of that extra mess. And so I go ahead and check these guys off. So that is sort of my tip number three for today. Maybe more. I don't know. I've lost count. To um, keep your drive nice and clear. Um, the other thing with color coordinating, and so I'm going to get here in science when we talk about our files now, I have a green science folder, and then for each unit of science, I have a different color of green. So this is why I say I'm like super hyper specifically organized. Now, at the end of every year, I do like to archive some things. Um, I'm going to go back here real quick. I'm trying to figure out which one of these, I think ecosystems, maybe I was in the right one. I don't know. I wanted to find something I knew has a lot of files in it. Here we go. So I have a whole bunch of files here in this folder. So um, like I said, I still have a lot of files and things. It's not all super specifically narrowing down, but you can create a folder and a folder for subfolders, same way that you just did. You just create it inside stuff. And what I like to do is I'll go change this to that list view we talked about. And I can change the date to when it was last modified. And I can really see those older files that I may not use anymore. And I'll do that with my whole drive, or I'll go through some of my drive folders and look at all of the files over time and archive those old ones out. Because sometimes you don't think about, like, if you don't use it, put it in an archive folder. Or in this case, I keep everything for the year. So, especially if you're teaching, um, these are all of my science, earth and space science test that I would have the students take. Um, the thing I'm going to talk about with files is use naming conventions. So what naming conventions means is create a name for a file that's very, very similar every time you use it. And one of the things that I've learned over time is I, I create sort of a tag so I know this is science. You're like, yeah, but you put it in the science folder. That really helps if you're searching. So if I ever want to search for sci, I'll just put S-I, S-C-I, holy cow. Um, and I search for it. I know I'm going to get every single one of those types of science activities. So I'm like, ah, oh, what was that under? I can't remember. I'll just look up everything for science. It makes it very quick and easy. Because if I look up the word science, that makes things a little bit more difficult because I have someone who shared a science folder with me. I have a flipped science classroom, Google Classroom. I mean, you can see I have like four different folders of science. So which one is it? So I just know that I have that sort of naming convention of how I name my Google Forms. The other thing is I like to put the date on when we do things. My team this year, we have totally talked about this. And I was like, dude, I'm going to go back and change it because they're right. I put the year at the end now because if I do have this in grid view, 
I can easily read the title a little bit faster and then the years at the end, because that's not hugely important unless I'm searching for it up here. So I can find it a whole lot easier. So if you notice all of my science activities, I've gotten in the habit of saying psi, dash, um, you can do underscore. Uh, some people do like just capital S. CI or something like that. But if you kind of tag those things, um, I have also done it where I've put a hashtag in front of quizzes because like quizzes were important to me to know where they were really quick because they, they factored into my grades. So I put a hashtag quiz on that file name so I could easily search like hashtag quiz when I was searching for things. So those are some sort of file naming conventions things. Um, that's another quick tip for how you can organize your drive. Is there any questions about that guy? Kids, we're getting kind of awesomely close to here. Um, if you do most of these tips and tricks and you just continue to sort of do this for most of your drive, and it does take a while. Um, it took me probably like a year of just getting into the habit of saying, this is what I'm going to do from now on um, to create these files and fol folders in this way. But once I did, it was so much easier to quickly find stuff that um, it kind of became a habit, especially the naming conventions for a file to do that way easy. Now, the other tip or trick is if um, you are creating a file or a folder, get into that folder first. So if I have another unit here in physical science, instead of being in my drive to create that folder, I'm going to go here to folder while I am here in this drive, and it will create it in that space. Um, so that's kind of another just tip or trick. I, I didn't realize that before. I would just create it or just create it out of nowhere, and then I'd be like, ah, it's in my drive now, and I have to constantly be moving it. So now if you go here and you create it, It's going to be in that space of the physical science one. So then it's easier to not have to be moving it around after the fact. You can move it into here. And then the other thing is if you are ever creating like digital portfolios or something that needs to be shared, create one folder that has those share permissions and have them dump everything in it. So another fun way to organize your drive. Um, one of the last things-ish I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is this lovely beast right here. Your shared with me space cannot be organized. I will have to say it is a scary, scary place that is dark and full of terrors. But um, I, half the time, I don't even know what things have been shared with me. I will be honest. I have no idea what half of this stuff is. But people sometimes try and keep everything here and shared with me and they are searching for it and they can't find it. And then they'll go here and try and change it by date. And it's just, you cannot really organize this space because everything here, and I'm going to change to the list view, is not going to really be owned by you. This is going to be owned by somebody else. So if you notice, I got a lot of stuff over here that is owned by a lot of different people. So what you can do, though, is you can right click on a file or a folder. Um, and there's two different ways that you can get this stuff out of your shared with me. You can either make a copy. And if you right click and make a copy, that means it puts a copy into your drive where you are now the owner. Now this is really great. Like this is a template here for a specific Google slide deck. And if I wanted to make a copy of this, that means I can now change that file, do whatever I want with it, and boom, it's mine, doesn't matter. So make a copy and I'll throw it in there. If though you have a file, let's say it's a file that someone shared with you and said, hey, I'm gonna share this with you real quick, but I want all of us to work on it together, but I want to, the other person wants to keep ownership of it, and you want to have all of those changes updated often, use add a shortcut to drive. So same thing, you still right click on it. And when you do that, oops, I don't wanna leave yet. Ah. Yeah, when you do that, it's going to create, let me see if I have one. Yeah, it's gonna create a file that has a little arrow on it right here. So you can say what folder you wanna put it in. You can move it all around your drive and organize it like you normally would, but it's gonna have an arrow. So when it has an arrow on it, you don't own it. 
someone else owns it, but it allows you to put that shortcut in your drive to where you can mess with it and use it just like a regular folder. So I work with um, a mentor program and they have the folder, they owned it. They ended up sharing it with me, but I ended up creating this shortcut. So if you ever see this little arrow right here, means you don't own it, but you get to have that shortcut in your drive where you can organize it. You can drop it into any of these other folders. You can keep it nice and organized like that. So that is essentially some ways that we can Marie Kondo our Google Drive. Um, I'll stop now for a couple questions and then I can um, also share with you this slide deck, which goes into a little bit more extra resources if you'd like them, the difference between all the different sharing permissions within Google Drive, and then how uh, priority files and workspaces work, which is kind of a little bit next level. But if you wanted me to go over that, I'd be willing to stay to kind of talk about what this is because this is kind of Google's newish thing. And by new, it's probably like a year old at this point. But um, that was one of those things you see popped up in your drive and you're like, I don't know what that is or why that's there. So um, yeah, that was for today. I do have a feedback form I will email out to you guys. I'll probably just throw it in an email because I don't want to have to think about finding it unless someone else in my team wants to do it for me. Um, <clears throat> I have to hyper-focus right now today on making sure I'm on top of stuff. So Jennifer or Christian, are there any questions? And I will stop the recording for now so you can feel comfortable asking them if you have any. If not, thanks for hanging with me today. Thanks, Karn.